look, I'm just saying, if I was prone to such things, I might think this is a good spot to put an armchair. <laughs> Welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake. Again! I'm Burning Dog Face, and uh, last time we rescued Sarah and Barry from the helicopter crash, though they seemed in pretty good shape themselves. And then we managed to get them safely inside the dam complex before the dark uh, blocked off the entrance and uh, forced Alan to go separately. Now we're heading into here. But uh, before I do that, I did look up a thing in between episodes so I can tell you that the collective noun for a group of ravens is uh, either a conspiracy of ravens a treachery of ravens, or an unkindness of ravens. People really don't like those birds, god damn! Zane's shoebox. Oh, here we go. Thomas Zane knew he had to remove all that had made this horror possible, including himself. That was the only way to banish the dark presence he had unleashed and now looked at him through the eyes of his dead love. But he also knew that despite his best efforts, it might someday return. So even as he wrote himself and his work out of existence, he added a loophole as insurance, an exception to the rule. Anything of his stored in a shoebox would remain. So... The idea there, the idea behind this loophole, is that he explicitly wrote an exception to the power of Cauldron Lake. Into the power of Cauldron Lake. It doesn't matter how radically history, reality, whatever changes around it. Uh, the stuff placed in Thomas Zane's shoebox will remain completely untouched. That's why... When we, you know, got into the cabin, there was a shoebox full of his books. And Al was like, huh, never heard of this guy. In Control, they established that the, the loophole actually worked too well, as they discovered that anything placed inside any shoebox becomes impervious to changes in reality. God damn! Makes me wonder how imprecisely he worded that to make that happen. Just think of all those shoes in the world being protected without even realizing it. I think the most terrifying thing about the power of Cauldron Lake is that it works its power retroactively. You know, if Alan decided that for the sake of the story he really needed to interact with Sarah Breaker's brother that she doesn't have, then not only would it spontaneously generate a fully grown man as her brother, it would generate decades of memories of growing up with him in her mind. It would be completely impossible for her to tell the difference. Boy, this feels safe. At least you got a safety rail this time. Hey, I hate that! Ah. Okay, unkindness, I get it! They're coming through the fucking floor! No brain, we can't use it as a super fun, happy slide. You just go flying off to your death.
Huh. I don't think this goes anywhere, but... Uh, no, no, not seeing anything. Oh, no! Oh, okay. I thought I accidentally dodged a bullet there. Although, come to think of it, I suppose accidentally dodging a bullet would probably be easier than intentionally dodging a bullet. Aha! Okay, yeah, okay, that would explain it. I was wondering about this car here. Fuck me, it just disintegrates them. No, no! Grandma's mad. Oh shit! Oh no. Oh no! Okay, we're running! What does that say? It doesn't matter, let's go! I'll check the footage or something. Uh, uh, where am I going? Okay, oh, yeah, that would've been bad. Oh no! This is bad, never mind. Uh oh! That actually startled me, well done. Oh god, it's coming. Telling me this isn't awake? Ah, well. Ah, no. What was I supposed to do there? I don't think I did that right. Hmm. Hmm. No, don't love this. Well, that was dumb. Uh, am I going up or down? No, no, we're... No, this is... This is right. Okay. Yes! You made it. Well done. Glad I was wrong. 
It's a foolish chance to take. Don't worry about the noise. We're safe here. I have looked after the well-lit room for many, many years now. There is no shadow in the well-lit room. The hour is fail-safe, and all the bombs are numbered and changed regularly based on their make and model. Right. Are you seriously going to question that after what you just saw? Jeez. <laughs> No, he's alone. It was active during the Second World War. They operated here back then. They must have built this. Yes, they did. It's my place now. Use emergency stop button. Report accident by calling 911. Report location. Okay. Take it, then I won't need to worry about the room anymore, because 6 and 33 and 118 need changing soon, and I don't want to climb up the ladder to change them, because it's very late, and I'm tired, and if you take it, I won't have to do that anymore. The page was autobiographical, a memory from my childhood. But I didn't write this. It was a page written by Thomas Zane. None of them were supposed to exist anymore. Alan seven years old, would fight sleep to the bitter end. When he did sleep, he soon woke up, screaming, the nightmares fresh in his mind. One evening, his mother, sitting by his bed, offered him an old light switch. She called it the clicker, and flicking the switch would turn on a magical light that would drive the beast away. To imbue the talisman with all possible power, she added that it had been given to her by Alan's father. Alan never knew him, and anything of his took on mythical proportions in his mind. With the clicker firmly in his hand, Alan finally slept like a baby. Now, almost 30 years later, Alan thought of this as he stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, the clicker in his hand. He took a deep breath and jumped. My mind swirled. I'd given the clicker to Alice, yet it was here. Zane had written it into existence in a story I had written. I can get to her now. I can finish this. Man, alive! It's waking up too quickly, you guys. Well, it's recursive. Did Thomas Zane write Alan Wake into existence as a safeguard? Is that what I'm getting from that? Is Thomas Zane Alan Wake's father? Oh, God. And you wondered why the chapter was called The Clicker. Well... I'm Burning Dog Face. And I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play Alan Wake, again! When we enter the home stretch, and we go to war with the light. For the light. Ha! I tried to say two things at once, and half of each one came out. That was weird. <laughs> I like that. It is silly. Till then, keep your light bulbs changed. Keep a flashlight on hand. Do not go out after dark.
And above all else, stay in the light.